Hi, I'm Benjamin Mack, and today we're going to get back to doing some draping. It's been a while, so I'm going to go through a demonstration today in how to drape a basic skirt. This is one of our um, beginner draping classes that we do in store at Mood Fabrics in New York and in LA. And uh, you might want to sign up for that class when we get them back up and running in the future. But for now, I'm going to take you through a quick tutorial on how to drape your basic skirt block. So when we're draping, we usually use muslin. So I've got a piece of muslin here. Now, because muslin is a fairly inexpensive fabric, sometimes the grain of the fabric uh, could get a little bit skewed, which means we want to start off by doing something which is called blocking the muslin. So I've cut off about three quarters of a yard and you have the edge of your fabric, which is the selvage, and then I've got the cut or the ripped end. Um, what I want to do is hold my fabric in one corner on the selvage, and then I'm going to go down to the diagonally opposite corner. It's a little bit hard to get this on the screen, but diagonally opposite corners, I'm going to hold both of those, and then I'm going to stretch the fabric. So I'm stretching across the diagonal. Then I switch to the other corners, and I stretch that way. So this is just kind of waking up the grain, if you like, that's what I like to say. And finally, to just help realign all of those grains, the threads that are woven together to make the fabric, we're going to hold on each selvage. So our hands are opposite, left selvage, right selvage, and I'm holding my hands exactly opposite to one another, and then I'm gonna stretch across. And I'll just keep moving my hands down the selvage. So move down a little bit, stretch across, and keep going until you get to the end of your piece of fabric. Now, if you're working with a really long piece of fabric, uh, the diagonal is not so easy, so you can do it in sections. Um, if you've got a smaller piece of fabric like I have, then it's not too difficult. Um, I must admit, I do have very long arms. So um, just do your best with this, do it in small sections, but it's important to get the fabric blocked so that we can just kind of try to realign the grain a little bit better. We wanna make sure that when we're draping, that the, the way that we're manipulating the fabric around the dress form is running true with the grain of the fabric so that as we're creating our shape, we're gonna be um, manipulating the fabric in a way that is natural to the grain of the fabric. If we were to do anything off grain, then we might end up uh, manipulating the fabric in a way that's not natural and therefore creating a shape that's not gonna work when we cut it out in a final project necessarily. All right, so my muslin is blocked. And I don't need this big piece of muslin for the first pattern piece that I'm gonna create. I'm gonna start on the front of the skirt. So what I'm gonna do, there's two things you can do here. You can measure the area of the dress form in which you'll be working and then cut down a, a piece of muslin an adequate size for what you need. Or like we do in our classes, we just keep it simple. We fold the fabric in half. So I bring one selvage across to meet the opposite selvage. And then on the folded side, I take my scissors and I just cut in a little bit, two inches is fine. And then I rip down the middle of the fabric. It's very satisfying to rip this fabric. Okay. So now I've got half of my piece of muslin, which will be used for the front of the skirt and half of my muslin that will be used for the back of the skirt. I have my first half of muslin ready to go for draping the front of the skirt. Um, just quickly, I want to go back on that point that I made about cutting down your muslin to the, the right size for what you need. So if you wanted to do that, depending on where you're working on the form, you want to measure the widest part of the form. That's going to be the, the widest that your fabric's going to have to be required for. So, um, so for a skirt, for instance, the hip is going to be the widest area. So I would measure, I'm going to be draping on just half of my form. So I would measure from center front around to the side seam. And then I would add a couple of inches, maybe two or three inches, just to give myself a little bit of extra space to work with. Um, three probably is best. And then the length, I want to drape from the waist down to the knee. So I would just want to allow myself a couple of inches above and a couple of inches below. So you could measure from the waist to the knee and then add a few inches above, a few inches below. So if you wanted to be a little bit more economical with your usage of muslin, then that's what you could do. Okay, so before we start draping, we need to mark out some key lines on our fabric. And you may remember a little while back, we, um, we did the draping of a sleeve. You should go back and check it out if you're interested in that. 
And so I marked out all of these key lines uh, just to be able to balance my fabric on the form and make sure that I'm working true with the grain of the fabric. So along my selvage side, I'm going to take, I'm going to use a Sharpie just so it shows up better on, on camera. Um, but you would be probably using just like a pen or a pencil, something that is uh, going to create a thin line. So with my Sharpie and with my quilt and sew ruler, this is one of the most trusty things in my kit. I'm going to line up the ruler so that I am marking in a line that runs parallel to the selvage and it's going to be one inch in from the selvage. So I draw that down and I'll just go the whole way down my fabric. It's a little bit longer than what I need this piece, but that's fine. So I've got the whole way down my fabric. So this is going to be my center front line. I'll hold it up and show you. So this is going to be my center front line. So that will line up with the center front seam on the dress form. The next thing I want to do is come down from the top edge of my fabric. So where I've cut or ripped across, I'm going to come down from there three inches that will give us plenty of space above the actual pattern shape that gets created. So I come down three inches and I'm going to create a line or a little mark. Then I'm going to use, you can use either an L-shaped ruler, you could use this grid ruler if this is all that you have, but what you want to draw is a line that is coming out perpendicular from your centre front line. And this is going to be your waistline. So I come out and there's no specific measurement for this. I have drawn a line that's probably about 11 inches long. That is definitely going to accommodate for the space in which I'm going to be draping around my waist here. So if you're not sure, always go a little bit longer. It's not going to matter if you've got a longer line, but if it's not long enough, then halfway through the drape, you'll discover that and you'll have to take everything off the form and remark some of your lines. So that's my waistline marked. The next mark that I want to put is for my hip. <clears throat> now, my hip line, I don't have that on my dress form currently. So what I'm going to need to do is mark that out with some draping tape. So I'll mark that out with some draping tape and then I'm going to measure from the middle of my waist tape down the center front to the middle of my hip tape. And that's going to give me the measurement I need for the next line that has to be drawn on the mother. Where do we position the hip tape? On these American standard size dress forms, the distance from the waist to the hip, it doesn't matter what size you're working on, seven inches is gonna work just fine. So that means from the middle of the waist tape, we come down center front seven inches, so I'm gonna measure that with my measuring tape. And then at that point, I'm gonna place a pin Then I'm going to come to the side seam and I'm going to do the same thing. So from the middle of the waist tape, down the side, seven inches, and then I'm going to place a pin. Now using those two pins, I can then have them be my guide for where to place the draping tape. And I'm going to put some pins into my draping tape just to make sure that it stays in position. And when I do this, I always say to my students, it's a good idea to place the tape, but then step back from the form and just double check that it's straight, that it's not going all wavy or that you haven't gone at an angle. When you're so close to the form, it's really hard to see that kind of thing. So apply the tape, step back, have a look. Does it look good? Yes, fantastic. Does it need to be adjusted? Adjust it, it's totally fine. And I'm gonna continue actually all the way around to the back. So I'll just quickly measure there as well. That way I'm getting everything prepared and set up for the front drape and the back drape. Okay. okay, so I'll put a pin in there just to hold the tape in place. So that's my tape in position, ready for this drape. It looks okay to me. I think we're good, I think we'll go with that. 
So, you'll remember now the measurement that I just created to place that tape was seven inches. So that means that on my fabric from the waistline that I've already drawn, I'm going to come down seven inches running down the center front line and I'm going to place a mark. So it's seven inches. Then again, square a line across the fabric, which will give me my hip line. So at this point, this is what you should have. You've got your center front line, you've got your waistline, and seven inches down you have your hip line. Okay, we're not done yet. We now want to mark in a line for what will be the side seam of our basic skirt block. So the widest part of what we're marking out here will be at the hip, because that's the widest part of the form. So with my measuring tape, I'm going to start at center front and I'm going to measure along my hip tape all the way around to the side seam. So it's going to be the distance for where I'm going to place the mark on the hip line that's on the fabric. So I have that measurement. Okay. And now on my fabric, I'm going to come along and place a mark on the hip line where that measurement falls. And from that mark, I am then going to use my square ruler or my grid ruler again to draw a line starting a little bit below the hip line, two inches below, and then all the way up and beyond the waistline. So I went a little over an inch beyond the waistline. So now what you should have is this. The last line that we want to mark out onto our fabric before we start to drape on the form is going to be a marker that will help us line up at the side seam and the waist. So just a standard measurement that I'm going to give you here. This works with these average size dress forms. We're going to come from the side seam line that we just created we're going to come in, so we're going from the side seam towards center front. We're going to come in three quarters of an inch. And we're going to draw a second line, which is running parallel to the first side seam line. And it's just a few inches above and below the waistline. So that is going to look like that. So three quarters of an inch in towards center front. And that will be the marker that will help us line up the fabric at the side seam waist level. Okay, we are ready to start pinning our fabric to the dress form. So that's what draping is all about. It's about pinning the fabric around the form and molding the fabric to the form. Um, sometimes you can drape and create volume as well, so you're not necessarily molding to the form, but you are using the form as your guide for how to create the shapes and the volume that you want. But this is a basic skirt, so we're gonna be molding to the form. So what I've done is where my selvage is, I'm folding the fabric along the center front line that I created. So I'm folding the selvage underneath to the inside. And that's just gonna give a little bit of reinforcement there by having that fold. It's gonna give a bit of reinforcement. And I'm gonna line up that folded edge, my center front edge, or my center front line, to the center front seam of the dress form. What I'm also gonna be lining up is the waistline and the hip line. I wanna make sure that everything is being aligned properly to the form. That's the whole reason for why we drew the lines on the fabric in the first place. So I get that lined up. Now I'm lining up the waistline at the middle of the waist tape, okay? And then as long as I was accurate with my measurements, then my hip line should fall into place as well. Now, I don't want you to worry too much about it. If this is your first time draping and your hip line is like an eighth of an inch off, um, that's not gonna be too much of an issue for you. Just make sure that if you are just a little bit off, that you just keep it consistent the whole way around to the side seam. You'll see in the next few steps what I'm talking about. So I get this lined up. I start off with a pin at my waistline and my hip first, and I'm gonna go and put some extra pins in 
running down centre front because I want to make sure that as I start to mould the fabric that I don't start pulling the fabric away from the centre front. That's going to distort my pattern. So I'll put a couple of extra pins down centre front. So I'm ending up with about five pins from waist to hip. Okay, so that's all of my centre front pinned. Next thing I'm going to do is line up the hip line all the way around to the side seam. And when I reach the side seam, I want to place a pin. So at this stage, you'll notice, again, as long as your measurements were reasonably accurate, you'll notice that the fabric is fitting nicely to the form. It shouldn't be stretched tight. We don't ever want to stretch the fabric tight around the form when we're draping but uh, it should be fitted nicely. We didn't add anything extra in there, it's just the measurement that it was take, as it was taken from the form. So, pin at the side seam. And then you might be thinking, okay, so what's gonna happen up here at the waist? I'm gonna show you now. So, I wanna just get this fabric sitting a little bit neater. And go back and double check, just make sure that your line along the hip is aligned to the draping tape. You should be able to see the draping tape through the fabric. Um, so just make sure that that's all aligned. If you want to, I don't always do this, but if you want to, you could put another pin maybe somewhere at the halfway point, um, perhaps where the princess seam is. The princess seam is this one that runs down through the, uh, the, this half of the dress form. All right, so that looks great. And now I'm ready to start working on creating the rest of the shape of this pattern. So we're going to start to manipulate the shape now so that we fit the form. For this line that we marked in here, this is one where we came in three quarters of an inch from the original side seam line. I want that line to align with the side seam of the dress form at the waist level. So what I'm going to do is just very, very carefully, I'm going to smooth the fabric up and I'm kind of guiding at the same time so that that line right there is going to fall in place with the side seam of the dress form. So I'm smoothing the fabric up. I can feel that side seam through the muslin. And when I've got it in position, I'll take a pin. Now something I want to point out here, and I find that this doesn't always happen for everyone, especially on their first go. Um, there's little discrepancies that come up and again, I don't want you to worry about that too much We're just going through the process and uh, You will notice though that quite likely your waistline that you've drawn here is Going to be dropping a little bit by the time we get around to the side seam and The reason for that is we're manipulating this fabric around curves So that's not going to remain straight all the way around the body as we go around the curve of the body That line is going to start to drop a little bit it usually, I would say, drops by about a quarter of an inch. So have a look. Maybe it's done at this time. Maybe it'll do it next time. If it hasn't done it, I don't want you to worry too much about it. You're still going to be able to get through this and have a skirt pattern at the end. Um, but if you want to start again and, and have another go at it, then rewind to the beginning of the video and, and you know start again. That's fine as well. So I've got my pin in at the waist. Now I am going to put some extra pins in along the side seam here just to hold everything in place. So you'll notice I'm never stretching the fabric or pulling at the fabric, I'm just smoothing the fabric gently. All right, now we still have all of this left over. What's that for? We're gonna be using this excess fabric here to create a dart. So I know my accent is funny, but what I'm trying to say is dart, D-A-R-T, uh, that's always a great source of amusement to all of my students in the New York store. Um, so we're going to create the dart and it, uh, it's going to be positioned with the princess seam of the dress form. So you can see on my form the princess seam here, it might be a little bit difficult to see, but the princess seam right here is where I want to try and position my dart. So as I'm doing that, what I will be doing is pinching out all of the excess that's left over to create the beginning of my dart. But before we do that, when you're draping, you don't want to create a pattern that becomes skin tight. You want there to be a little bit of room to move. So we do something which is called adding in some ease or taking a pinch of ease. So the pinch of ease is gonna be positioned along the waist level 
and I always like to put it just in from the side seam. And a pinch of ease is just that. We're pinching the fabric. Then I'm going to take a pin and from the folded edge of where I have pinched, I'm going to come in one eighth of an inch and I'm going to pin through that pinched piece of fabric. And that's just going to put a little bit of fabric in reserve. So once my drape is finished, I'll release that. And what it does is it just takes a little bit of fabric into reserve so that as I continue to manipulate the fabric around the form, once I'm, once I'm finished, there'll be these added amounts of ease that will result in a pattern when we're, when we're done that, uh, that will fit the form nicely with a little bit of room to move. Right, so the final step for the front of our drape um, for this basic skirt is to pinch out the dart. So we have the pinch of ease, which I just went through. Now I'm gonna pin all of the excess that's left at the waist level, I'm gonna pin that up, positioning it as best as I can near the princess seam, that's gonna be a good spot for it. And there, there are lots of different ways to pin this dart. Um, I, I see people doing all sorts of techniques and uh, there's no right or wrong way to do it. The main thing is that you're pinning out the dart properly um, in the sense that you're creating the shape that it needs to be. You could fold the fabric underneath itself. You can do what I'm doing here, which is pinning it so it sticks out kind of like a fish fin. Um, I find it easier to do it this way because when I want to draw in the, the, all of the, the lines for this pattern, um, it's easy just to draw down one side of this uh, fish fin and then flip to the other side and draw down that side. You'll see in a moment. So I continue to pin down my dart. Now remember, I'm making it nice and fitted, but I'm not trying to make it skin tight. So just keep pinning down and you'll get to a point where the fabric is just gonna become flat again and you won't be able to pin any further. Okay, so that is my dart. Now, you want to try to not have any kind of bubbles happening in the fabric, but it is fabric, it is organic, um, and so it will, it will definitely have a little bit of a, you know, um, as a little bit of looseness to it, I guess, in some points, because we're not trying to make it skin tight. Um, but what you should have is a dart that looks like this. So widest point is at the waist, coming down to the point of the dart, where the fabric will then just smooth out and fit to the form again. We have finished draping the front of our skirt, so a round of applause for all of us. And now what we need to do is mark out the drape. So you don't want to go to the trouble of doing all this work and then not recording what you've just created. So marking in the drape means going and drawing in all of the key lines, the key shape of your pattern. So starting at center front, that's where I always like to start, I just work my way around the pattern. So along the waist, the waistline is going to be as is, and then when I hit the dart, I'm going to mark down one side of that dart, and I'm just following the line of where I've put the pins. Then I come to the other side of the dart, and I do the same thing, marking down, following the pins. As I start to come along to the side seam at the waist, I want to feel for where that waist tape is. Now I want to keep drawing along the middle of the waist tape. So the middle of the tape is my guideline. And as I get to the side seam, you'll notice as I said, the original waistline has dropped a little bit. And my new waistline is raised slightly. Don't worry if that didn't happen for you. If it still just goes straight across, that's fine, especially if it's your first go. Don't be hard on yourself. Now we're going to come down the side seam. So the side seam of these forms usually is quite bumpy. You can't miss it. So just using that as your guide, we come down the side seam. And by the time we reach the hip, we're going to be back in line with the original side seam that we marked out. Now I don't need to mark anything else. When I start to turn this into a final pattern, I'm just gonna square a line down from the hip all the way down to whatever desired hem length I want. Um, I usually go with a, a basic hem length from the waist down to the hem of 22 inches, but that's gonna come later. So that's our front skirt pattern draped. 
Once you've marked everything, always go back and just double check that you've marked everything, that you haven't missed a section, because if you take this off and you have missed a section, it's not easy to put it back on the way that it was. So you always just want to do a double check. Once you have established that, yes, you've marked everything in, then you'll take all the pins out and you'll take the pins out for the dart. You'll take the pins out where the ease was and you'll take this fabric off the form and then we're ready to move on to the back. So before we move on to the back, I just wanted to show you what this would look like um, or should look like when you've taken it off the form. So if uh, we'll just zoom in on this a little bit and you'll see that I've got my rough lines drawn out so you can see the dart is marked in there. You can see the waist over towards the side seam has raised slightly and then you've got a very gradually curving line that goes from the waist down to the hip. So that's the front done. Now we're going to move on to the back and we're following much the same rules. There'll be a few little additional steps for the back and, uh, and you'll find out what those are.